Hello. Today I'm going to show you how I do a provisional cast on. The way I do it is I take two different colored yarns. So the green one here, the dark green is my working yarn. And then this bright yellow yarn is what's going to be my waist yarn. So I'm going to take the two strands and I'm going to tie a slip knot with them together and put it on my needle. Oop, I have an extra loop there. Okay, now I'm going to put the tails in my right hand so they're out of the way and the working yarns here on the left and I'm going to hold them apart a little bit like this, sort of like you do for a long tail cast on. And the way I do it is I will grab the working yarn from the back like that. And then I will come over the waist yarn and under and grab the working yarn again from the back and then pull it up under the waist yarn so that the waist yarn is underneath and the working yarn has formed a stitch over the top. So again, I will grab the working yarn from the back. So that's one stitch. And then I'm going to come up over the waist yarn, grab the working yarn from the back again, and pull it up back in front of the waist yarn. So that's another stitch. So now I have four stitches on the needle. And you can kind of see here that it almost looks like a purl one, knit one, purl one, knit one, with the purl bumps being my waist yarn. So again, I pick up the working yarn. That's a stitch. I'm going to go over the waist yarn, pick up the working yarn from the back, and bring it under and over the waist yarn like that. So now I have six stitches. This is the method that I use almost exclusively when I'm doing a provisional cast on. For example, when I did my Knitter's Day Out Afghan, each square I put on a provisional cast on so that I could pick up the stitches later and graft the squares together. So I'm going to grab it from the back. I'm going to go over the waist yarn and grab it from the back and bring it up through the front. So that gives me two stitches. So the first one, when I grab it from the front, is my sort of pearl-ish stitch. And then when I go over the waist, waist yarn and grab the yarn and bring it back up to the front, that gives me my sort of a knit stitch. So the back and the front and the back and the front. Today I am casting on for a sweater, a top-down sweater that I'll be knitting in the round. An issue that I have frequently with top-down sweaters is that they, the neck is too wide for me. I like to have a tight-fitting neck, so I don't do top-down sweaters very often, but when I do, I will often do a provisional cast on and that way I can pick up the neck stitches at the end and put the ribbing on and work up from there and then I can make the neck as tight as I need it to be or want it to be. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to, so I pick it up from the back, swing it over and under the waist yarn, pick it up from the, and draw it through the front. So a pearlish stitch and a knit-ish stitch. Pick it up from the back, that's my pearl stitch. And then over the waist yarn, pick it up from the back and draw it through the front, that's my knit-ish stitch. So it would be very easy to work ribbing straight off of this if you wanted to. Uh, I'm going to be doing stockinette. And it'll be just like any other provisional cast on. Now, I do have a couple words of caution. This tends to be a loose cast on. So I typically do it onto a needle that is two sizes smaller than my working needle. 
So my working needle is going to be a size 4 for this sweater, and I'm casting my provisional cast on onto a size 2. Another thing you have to be very careful about with this cast on is that it will spin around your needle. So it can easily twist around the needle. And if it twists all the way around and when you work your first row, if it's twisted, some of the stitches will come undone and you'll have a mess and you'll have to do it all over again. Because of that, I like to do it onto a straight needle. That way I can make sure that all my stitches are lined up properly because if I were working this onto a circular needle, as soon as the stitches come off onto the cord, they'll start spinning around the cord and it will be very hard to keep track of. So I do this on a needle two times smaller and I do it uh, on a straight needle and then I will work my first row off of the straight needle. Let me show you. I'm working on a new afghan now and I'm doing the same thing where I am doing a provisional cast on. So this is Nora's vintage afghan that I'm working on and this is square number four. And here is my provisional cast on edge. It's a little bit hard to see because of the dark brown yarn but you can see the bright blue yarn running through the stitches. So what I will do when I'm ready to go back is I will slip a needle through these live stitches and then just pull the blue yarn out. Kind of like if you were using a lifeline. Put your needle in through the stitches and then pull the lifeline out. It's a, it's a similar concept here. And then on the other end, I didn't bind off my top end. I just took the live stitches and put them on another length of blue yarn. So when I'm ready, I can graft all of these squares together and not have a seam. Okay, I'm down to my last six stitches, so I'm just going to review it one more time. So I take my needle to the back and draw up a stitch. That's one stitch. Now I'm going to bring it forward over the waist yarn, go back and pick up the main yarn, bring it forward, and that's a stitch number two. So in the back, pick up a stitch, bring it over and under, and then catch the working yarn, bring it back up, and that's a second stitch. So that's four. I have two more to go under the back yarn, that's one, over the waist yarn, pick up the working yarn, bring it back forward, and that's, so that's six more stitches. So now I have all of my stitches cast on. I have them lined up straight-ish on my needle, and now I'm going to knit them off onto my working needle, which is a size four. The thing you need to be careful with is that the waist yarn is wrapped around the working yarn like this because if you don't have it wrapped around you really don't have anything in to knit to. It's loose. It's going to come off the needle. So make sure the waist yarn is wrapped around like that to give you a stitch to work into. Okay, so now I will knit that stitch off. And I will continue on knitting my stitches off the cast on needle onto the working needle. Okay, I'm almost here at the end. I'm going to knit these last couple of stitches. And then when I get to the slip knot, I'm just going to drop that and leave it hang. I'm not going to take it out yet because that's stabilizing that corner there. After I've worked a couple of rows, then it will be safe to pull that out and it won't all disintegrate on me. So now I have all my stitches on my needle. I am ready to join in the round and start my neck 
and you can see I have my waste yarn coming through at the base of each stitch. So now I can start my sweater. Thanks for sitting here with me today. Have a great day. Bye-bye.